Well, the days of isolation during the pandemic led to lots of projects and new ideas being born. And one of those ideas came to Kyra Peralt. She's a mother of two who just thought keeping a diary during quarantine would help her sort out her feelings. She started the journal and then sent it to strangers, inviting other women to write their own stories in the book. So this diary has really taken off, and Kyra is joining us now to tell us more. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Good day. Yeah, good, good day. Good day to you. It is a good day to have you on our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us about your genesis. How did this just all start? You needed an outlet? <laughs> yes, it started last spring. I was in a place of deep isolation, just trying to figure things out, readjust to our new lives at home, working from home, kids at home. And I wondered what other women were experiencing. And I wanted to know in a way that felt authentic and, and real and human. Mm. So you started writing it. And I, I think it, uh, it kind of turned into maybe the biggest chain letter ever. And then you just started passing this journal around. And now there's some 700 women who are writing in these journals. Yeah. So I found a stranger um, who was willing to be the first woman to receive it. And it has continued to travel. And women have continued to sign up. So yes, we have hundreds of women signed up uh, in the snail mail queue to receive diaries. They've traveled all over the U.S. Uh, they've gone beyond the U.S. to interesting places, Australia, the U.K., Canada, Portugal, diaries going to Japan and Hong Kong, the Netherlands, and so many other wonderful places. So reading the stories are just awesome. Can, and inspiring. I, I can just imagine. Can, have you had an opportunity to meet any of the women that you've written that have written in the book? Absolutely. We have monthly gatherings where they can connect with one another, see the faces behind the handwritten words. Uh, so we definitely give opportunity and space for women to connect further around this shared experience. Is there a shared experience as far as when you're, when you're reading that? Was there a theme or did everyone sort of experience this differently? Everyone approached it differently. Um, they're invited to take up as much space in the diaries when they arrive, read the other stories it contains. Some of them approach it saying, dear diary or dear sisters. Um, everyone approaches it differently. Some draw. It's just a very different experience for everyone. What were, what were the first weeks like for you personally in your, in your isolation? What did you go through? I had to readjust to just being at home all day, not traveling to the city to work out of the co-working space that I'm a part of. Um, and I just had to adjust to being the person that wakes up to make sure everyone has breakfast on time. Um, instead of being available to hop on meetings and join some of the conversations that were required of me uh, for the work that I was doing. Also making sure that my children were taken care of um, at home under our roof and partnering with my husband. So it was a lot. Yeah, yeah it was a lot. We've all been through it for sure. And it'd be so interesting to read these stories. What's the ultimate goal for these diaries? They're out there. So what will they become? Yeah, so right now we're focused on continuing the monthly gatherings where women can connect with each other, seeing the faces that are behind the handwritten words, having the events. Um, women have expressed an interest in, in doing a lot of interesting things with them, art exhibits, and different things like that. Um, po potentially publishing some of them. Some of them are interested in having their stories published. So we'll explore a lot of different things, but at the time we are focused on adding value to the community. You know, the pandemic is knock wood, hope in the rear view mirror, but do you think that this will continue? This, this, uh, this writing will have legs to keep moving forward? Absolutely, absolutely. They are still signing up to receive it because when they receive it, they write whatever it is they wish to share with other women in the world. And they feel the sense of safety and vulnerability on the blank pages. And they love that feeling. They love it. And so we're continuing to meet and gather in this shared space. So what if you want one? How do you get it? And then what do you do once it arrives at your house? 
So to sign up, you would go to the travelingdiarytour.com. You will get added to a snail mail queue. Before it arrives, you will confirm your address. And once it arrives, you have it for three days. During the three days, you get to read the stories that are written in it. You get to share your own and then mail it to the next participant. Oh, so you're actually responsible for mailing it. Well, this is so great. You know, I, I'm, I think I might have a little dyslexia, Kyra, because I thought it was the Traveling Dairy Tour. And this is oh. much, much, much better than the Traveling Dairy Tour and about cows. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I, I think so. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. Is it just for women or can men yeah, sign up can too? Yeah, I want to write in it. <laughs> I get asked that question all the time. So this diary is for women only. Um, women are finding the space to connect with one another across the globe, um, learning about each other's different cultures, lifestyles, and, and they are just enjoying it. So, okay. yeah, you're going to have to start one for the men, Scott. All right. Thank you, Kyra. We <laughs> appreciate it. I'll put in a line about you. We appreciate right. you being with us, Kyra. Have a great day. Thank you. You 